And good evening, good morning, good day, and welcome all of you to another live streaming session from a home in Italy. I uh, hope everybody's doing well this uh, this glorious Thursday evening. Well, it has been glorious here in Abruzzo. I don't know what it's been like uh, in the rest of the world, but there you go. So good to, to, to see you again. I'm saying see you again. I'm just looking at a little black camera, but you know what I mean anyway. Hope everybody's doing well out there in internet land. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're streaming on YouTube. We're streaming, hopefully, on a, uh, our Facebook page, on A Home in Italy. And we've also included a new Facebook page uh, called Italian Property uh, Under 80,000 Euros, uh, which is now run by A Home in Italy. So hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's also uh, running live on there. If it's not, apologies, and we'll try again, uh, try again next week. So hopefully everybody's doing really well. Just to let you know, next week, next Thursday, uh, we are starting our new... It's actually March. Can you believe it's March? Uh, we're starting our, our new round of live sessions, uh, including some new subjects. Uh, so as you see, 2nd of March, we're talking about deposit contracts and what they mean to me, well, not to me, to you, obviously. Uh, so within that session, we're going to be talking about... Things like uh, compromessos, which you may, may have heard of, promises to buy, promises to sell, um, proposta di acquisto, which is a proposal to buy. We're going to talk about all different types of contracts and how you can actually be tied in without possibly even realizing it. Uh, so that's a good, a great one next week, as they all are. Uh, and we're also going to tell you about a, a contract that most people have never even heard of, even before you actually put an offering for a property, even before you actually go and see a property. You may be asked to sign certain contracts. So we're going to go through all of that uh, next week. And then on the 9th of March, inside the notary office, always a popular one on, on the old webinar system that we used to do. Uh, basically, we take you inside the office so you can uh, see photographs of what it's like in there, uh, the notary that we usually use, so you can see the kind of layout it is, uh, the kind of people that work in there. And we're going to be talking about the final contract, what's in that final contract, how it's all put together and all that kind of thing. So this all follows on from some of the previous webinars uh, or streaming sessions, should I say, uh, that we've done before about legal documents and that kind of thing. So that is on the on the 9th. Then on the 16th, this is a brand new one, a one euro property versus a hundred thousand euro property. We're going to be talking basically at restorations here. I'm going to be giving you a few uh, tips. I'm to, my feelings about these one euro properties and, and also putting them up against sort of properties that may be 20, 30, 40, 50 K. I want to give you a bit of advice where I think the tipping point is where people should either consider the one euro properties or leave them alone. Because uh, it is quite a big, a popular thing now with uh, with some people, especially uh, in areas such as Sicily and that kind of thing. So I thought we'd have a bit of a discussion on that uh, and give you a rough idea on, on sort of prices for restorations and also sh share with you some photographs of the restorations we did in this house. So that's always a, always a popular one. Then we have on the 23rd of March, uh, our usual, um, what can I say, episode about meet the home buyers, where we bring people in that's maybe just bought or bought a while ago uh, to give you their experiences, why they chose the places they did and all the rest of it. So that, again, is a popular one. And then on the 30th of March, this is when we get really depressed. That's why I've left it right to the very end of March, where we invite Mr. Grim Reaper himself, Jan Luigi, our resident taxman, who's going to come and, uh, and share with us all the delights uh, of taxes that you will be liable to pay if you decided to become a resident of Italy, but also taxes that you may have to pay if you didn't become a resident, but you have a house here and you're thinking about renting it out. So we are going to be covering uh, tax issues. I say that is on the 30th of March uh, with our resident accountant, Gianluigi. So it should be a good one. Is not as miserable as I make him out, but uh, he likes to give us a little bit of bad news uh, here and there. But it will be uh, special that, that that particular evening we will be talking a lot about the seven percent uh, tax rate for all of you people that are thinking about moving to Italy uh, to take this fantastic seven percent tax for ten years. So he's going to be going into that, telling you what all that's about, uh, what what it entails, how you can get it, and all that kind of thing. So that is. Uh, that's going to be a great one at the end of March. So as you can see, a full program for March. I will be doing publicity uh, by email and also on, uh, on obviously the usual channels that, that we do. If you haven't joined our database yet, uh, then please do info at homeinitaly.com or you can visit the website and you can see lots of places there where you can uh, uh, 
uh, where you can actually join uh, the database. We do send obviously new property links when they come out for properties in Abruzzo. Uh, we're now also adding properties in Puglia. That's something new that we've uh, we've now got our contacts in place for Puglia. So we're really excited over the next month to six weeks to start showcasing properties in Puglia. I've got a couple of fantastic people down there that I'm really pleased with. And one of them is going to come and join us on here as well. That's going to be probably April time. Um, but yeah, we do we do send emails about properties mainly in Abruzzo. Um, but yeah, there's lots of useful information that, that we do send by, uh, by email as much as possible. And then the last announcement before we get into our subject tonight, which is about Abruzzo. Um, just want to remind people about our a home in Italy on the road trip that we are doing on the 4th and 5th of May. I did send an email out to everybody about this. Um, it's a trip that we're doing, I say, over two days. It actually, we actually meet on the 3rd. Uh, the 3rd is aperitivo time in the afternoon. We come and collect people uh, from the airport at Pescara for anybody coming in from the UK. We do that uh, in line with the Ryanair flight from Pescara. And then we all meet in Pescara. Saint Pescara quite a lot, aren't I? Uh, in the centre of Pescara, next to the railway station, uh, for anybody coming in from Rome or maybe Milan or anywhere else, it's easy to, to, to get into Pescara. We'll meet people there. We go for an aperitivo and have a bit of a chat about what's going to happen over the following days. And then on the 4th and 5th of May, we pick you up always from the centre of Pescara uh, next to the railway station and uh, take you around in our, in our bus. And we visit lots of different uh, locations, different towns, different areas. And we also visit properties on the way around as well. It's a great way to get to know the area, um, not just about coming out here and looking at properties, but to, to get to know the uh, to get to know the area as well. Obviously, we don't cover the whole of Abruzzo, but we're going to be covering some great areas, especially around the Sulmona uh, part of Abruzzo, which is absolutely stunning. So, if you are interested in that, there are a few places left. I think we're just over half full. Uh, we don't take huge groups around, uh, so we we tend to try and keep it sort of lower. And we are going to be doing these things quite often uh, in the future as well. We're definitely doing one in October, but we are also considering making it possibly a monthly thing as well. Uh, that's something that we're in discussions with at the moment. So if you are interested in that, please send me an email at info at hominitaly.com and I will send you a PDF so you can get all the information on that. Okay, so that's all the, let me get rid of that. That's all the notices out of the way. Let's talk about my favorite subject, which is Abruzzo. What can I say about this place? I mean, we have mountains, we have the sea, we have ski resorts, we have brilliant beach resorts, we have vineyards, we have glorious countryside, we have fantastic towns, we have an airport, we have, what else do we have? We have so much here, uh, it is worth shouting about. But I do also want to, believe it or not, I do also want to get a little bit serious tonight. Tony said he wasn't going to add the uh, the little. Uh, well, I, I don't know how to do these things. These sound effects. We have these sound effects that every now and then come sort of popping in. But there you go. We are going to get serious because <laughs> I, I do apologise. Um, I've got a bone to pick with lots of people in internet land, and it sort of ties in with this subject tonight about Abruzzo. Uh, I, stick with me. Bear with me, and you'll see what I'm going to get at. Abruzzo, for me, is, I'm going to say, the best area uh, in, in Italy. Obviously, I would say that. I chose, chose to be here. Um, there's lots of reasons for that. My main reason is that it is a, how can you say, a genuine place. It is a um, tourist come. Um, there's no tourist hotspot. It doesn't have a Florence. It doesn't have a Rome. It doesn't have a Siena doesn't have a Venice. I'm running out of places to say, so I'll move on. But what it does have is something that, in my opinion, is completely different to any other region, where it has the whole region is, 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 the, is the, what can I say, is, is the destination, if you like. What I mean by that, there is so many things here. There's so many experiences that you can have. So whether that is sort of going down to the beach or going up to the ski resorts or everything in between. You can literally do anything you like. And the reason why I've got a beef with people, some people, not everybody, obviously not you guys all tuning in and watching, uh, with people in internet land is many of you have probably seen my YouTube uh, channel where we put lots of properties for sale. In fact, you probably see it just over my shoulder. 
Uh, lots of properties for sale. We do property videos and that kind of thing. And you get these strange folk. I'm going to say strange folk because people that answer, that, that write comments on these videos, some of them are just, I don't know what's wrong with people. I really don't. How people can sit at home and start judging a place when they don't even know it is beyond me. And we get sort of lots of comments about uh, maybe some people saying, no wonder the prices are so cheap. Nobody lives there. Uh, all the towns are abandoned, uh, blah, blah, blah. And all of this rubbish that spouts from people. And I, I really think it's, I don't know if it's boredom. I don't know if it's boredom. I don't know if it's jealousy. I don't know if it's a mixture of both or just because they're weird. Because there's just something not right, not right about people. How can somebody that's never been to an area, and I guarantee that these people have never been here, suddenly make all these comments about the place and actually think they're right? That, that's the thing that annoys me. You know, sometimes I look at properties for sale, even in, in France or wherever, um, just out of interest. You know, and for me to suddenly jump on there and say, oh, that's only that price because it's like this and like this, it drives me insane. And today, strangely enough, I was doing my usual sort of internet searches and came across a, a channel from somebody that I think is in the Molise area, somewhere like that. And this person actually did a 14-minute video uh, about this, about this exactly this subject, about sort of why, why when you take videos, people comment about there not being anybody in the streets and all the rest of it. And I know lots of you will, will, will be thinking, yes, I'm, I'm thinking that. I wonder if the towns are run down and blah, 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 blah. And this person tries to explain uh, to, the, to the viewing public why this is so. so. And she actually made some really great points. And one of them was when they say, manage your expectations. Now, when somebody says to me, manage your expectations, to me, that's usually a warning to say, look, this is really bad. So just, you know, don't expect too much and you'll be absolute fine. absolutely fine. I don't go for things like that. You know, I, I don't like sort of things like that. So that, that kind of phrase. But then when she went in to explain why, I actually agreed with a lot that she was saying. And it, she was mentioning that, you know, you walk around towns, it looks like every, nobody's there. Now, I've just been in Puglia, as, as I said. I've been there for the weekend, and I've been to one of the most popular uh, tourist destinations close to Albero Bello, where all the truly are, and we stayed in a place called Loco Rotondo, which is an absolutely stunning place, absolutely beautiful place, and all whitewashed town and all the rest of it, and we stayed right in the centre, and we had a, a pizza on Sunday night, I think it was, and talking to the guy that owns the restaurant, he said, you pick the perfect time to come because it is an absolute nightmare living here after Easter onwards. And he was telling us how it's just completely wild and crazy, too many people and all the rest of it. Now, as you're walking around towns like that, it does look picture perfect. It does look like the postcard. When I come back here to Abruzzo, there's something, something different I like that comment, what Jeffrey's saying. Sorry, put that back up again, Tony. That is, don't let it worry you. These people think they are funny, but in fact, they are completely irrelevant. I love that one, Jeffrey. Thank you. True, completely irrelevant. <laughs> anyway, where was I? So back to this touristy place. So we, we walked around the streets of Lo Loco Rotondo a couple of times, um, probably in one evening time, um, um, no, two evenings and one time during the day, and didn't see so very people, so very few people, handful of people. I don't really see what the big deal about that is because I think what we all think about places, we all, I can imagine people saying, I just want to be able to walk down to a little piazza and see all these people and, and sit and people watch and, 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 and I don't know, sit in a little bar or sit in a little restaurant. I understand all that. I get all that. That's what I want. That's what I wanted for the weekend. But when I come back to Abruzzo, it's different because I can have that if I want it. And then I can stay well clear of it if I don't want it. And that's the, that's the thing. That's why, to me, Abruzzo is like a home. That's why I've got a passion for it. Because it's almost like a region where when you drive into it, you can close the door behind you and leave everybody else outside. That's, that's the whole region. Whether you're coming from Rome, when you come from Rome to Abruzzo, it's going up and up and up, and you hit the Abruzzo broad, uh, border, it flattens out, and then it comes down and down. And you're surrounded by amazing-looking mountains and other 
close that door behind. When you pass the Lazio and Abru, close the door. When you come up from Molise or Puglia, close the door. When you come down from Le Marche, close the door. Keep closing it because this region is different and it's different for so many fantastic reasons. Not for these reasons that these nutters tell us that wind me up. Why I should let wind me up, I don't know. Why I should look at these polls, but I do. My wife, Silvana, who runs this business with me, says to me, just ignore. Ignore what's up. Why do you go on that? I can't help myself. What's wrong with me? I don't know. But I need to, I need to get the word out because it is so important. You've got to look at things in a different way. You've got to manage your expectations. And that doesn't mean don't expect too much. It doesn't mean that. What it means is expect everything and you'll get even more. That's what I mean by that. That's what I mean about closing the door because we don't need the rest. We've got everything here. And you need to really understand that, Brutso. You can only do it when you're here. You can't do it from a computer at home. If I go to Florence, I love Florence. If I go to Rome, I love it. If I go down to Puglia, I absolutely love Puglia. Don't get me wrong, I love all these places. We go to Sicily so many times. I adore Sicily. And I will go on the internet and I will look at things because I'm there for a reason. I'm there because I'm there for two weeks. And I need to make sure I see, I need to see what I need to see, eat in the places that I want to eat, book early because it's difficult to get in in, in, in height of uh, season, and do all of that because I'm there for that two weeks. You shouldn't be doing that about Abruzzo. So many people I've seen make a huge error, in my opinion, which is they contact me. They say, I'm coming out to, uh, sorry, Sean is saying, good thing is, Dave, these nutters won't be moving to Abruzzo. Keep scaring them all. That, that is true. That is true. They will not be moving them. We don't want them. Abruzzo is a better place without them. They just keep popping onto the YouTube thing just to wind me up. They're allowed to do that. It gets the view numbers up anyway. Um, I've lost my train of thought again. Anyway, so... <laughs> When you're back, when you're here in Abruzzo, when you're at home thinking, I want to go and see property in Abruzzo, and you've never been here before, rip up the rule book. Rip up, rip up everything that you've ever done about when you're going on a holiday and you think, that's the place where I need to go. Because you don't know what Abruzzo is like. You don't know how big Abruzzo is. People make the great mistake of booking themselves loads and loads and loads of properties to see and then you can't get around them in a day i i know where i'm going when i leave this house i can drive to certain towns and villages and properties and i can see so many in a day but i also know that i can only see literally so many in a day which is usually three four five six seven pushing it but people book themselves like a dozen appointments and off they go so the, the next place dave how, how far is such and such and i say how far is such and such on a map, it's that far. The reality is you've got to get over that mountain and get around the other side. And people people just do unrealistic things. Or the other thing that, that lots of people do, the mistake, is they just read something about a brutal. Right, that's where I want to be. I've mentioned this on, on other places before. I'm not, I'm not, I am going to give my opinion on lots of parts of a brutal. Some people are not going to like it. It's my opinion. I'm entitled to my opinion, and I'm going to give it to people. And lots of people talk about, for instance, Chita Sant'Angelo. Chita Sant'Angelo is a nice place. Why so many people talk about Chita Sant'Angelo? I still haven't worked out. I see so many people, especially from the US, it must get lots of publicity in the US. And I'm not pulling it down. And anybody that's from Chita Sant'Angelo or going to Chita Sant'Angelo, it's great. But for people to contact and say, I'm, I'm going to base myself, I just want to look around there because that's it's close to Pescara. I wonder, you've never been. You don't know what this place is like. You don't know what Pescara is like. People look at Pescara because it's just a big town. It's the center. It's the, it's, people think, okay, Pescara, that's where I want to be. You don't know what Pescara is like. Did you know that there's not really a, an old town in Pescara because it was pretty much destroyed in the Second World War? There's probably one street, a couple of streets, with some old buildings on. Are you looking for historical Italy? You won't find it in Pescara. That's not pulling Pescara down. I love Pescara. We go to Pescara for a reason. Whether that's to walk along the, 
uh, the, 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 the promenade where all the bars and restaurants are, whether it's for the busy thing, whether it's for the shopping, whether it's for the, uh, for the I don't know, whatever it could be, whether it's for the airport, whether it's, for it's some of the, the bigger department stores, maybe are down there, maybe it's just to go and eat some fish, whatever. It's a great place. But if you're looking for historical Italy, you won't find it. People will go to Pescara, but yet they won't go to Chieti. Chieti was what they call a free city during the war. It wasn't bombed. It wasn't touched. It was a place where the Red Cross were. So nobody, nobody did anything to that city. Chieti is brilliant. If you're looking for historical cities, you've got, you've got Chieti. But some people don't. They, 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 they home in on one place, which is, you know, fine. try and see as much as you can. But I don't understand where it comes from. I'm almost accusing some of you of being armchair expert, and I, but I mean it to you in the nice way, not like those other, anyway. By sort of already thinking, oh, I want to be here, 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 and that's it. I'm not going to look outside of that box. You're missing so much. It is extremely difficult to, to try and sort of pin areas down and where should I start, especially if you're only here for a short amount of time. But don't put yourself in that box. Now, when I give you some of my opinions on places, I mean, I could sit here and show you photographs of Abruzzo all day long, you know, and it all look very nice and all the rest of it. But what I want to try and do is try and break down the region so you can work out how best to spend your time. And I'm going to give you my opinion on my favorite places. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because they're my favorite place. And I'm going to give you reasons why I'm going to tell you why I think they're my, my favorite places. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want you to visit it. I want you to listen to what I'm saying and try and split your time up. Cancel bookings if, if needs be. Cancel looking at the, be honest with people. If you're not ready to buy yet, if you're saying that I'm not ready to buy, I just want to look at the area, speak to your agent or whoever it is. Hopefully you come and see me as well while you're here. But explain that to people because there's no point looking at loads of, 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 of sort of houses in, in all these areas and all that because you may get there and think, oh, actually, no, I don't really like it here. The biggest part is finding the right place. Whenever I take people property viewing, I never go past lunchtime. There's a theory to my madness as well, but, uh, but the, it's, it's, it's not just because I want to go for dinner. That is one of the reasons, but... You drive yourself insane. If you're looking at all of these properties for, for hours and hours and hours, I guarantee you, once it gets to the to mid-afternoon, you're not even going to want to buy a property in Italy. In fact, you've had enough. You want to go home because it's too much. It's too much for us to handle. It's too much to, to cram to, too much in, in such a huge area. So don't pinpoint one place and say, that's where I want to be when you've never been. You can't do that. I understand that you have to start somewhere. So start from tonight have a completely different look at, at how how the area is 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 is, is laid out because i'm going to try and explain that as best i can to you i'm going to tell you as i said before where i think you should go all the houses listed on a home in italy.com and it's growing and growing and growing once i get around to actually putting the new ones on i have seen in person Every single property that is on that website, which at the minute there's 100 and something, I've got a, a large number to go on and I've got some to come off. I've seen every single one because I want to see everyone because I want to be able to say to you, this is what this is like. No, I don't think that's the right one for you because you've just told me X and I'm thinking this is too white and all the rest of it. And I choose these places. What does that mean? What, it means that I've done a lot of traveling in Abruzzo and I've chosen areas first. I've said, this is where I want to sell because of X, Y, Z. I've always done that for the 15 years that we've been here. For me, it's all about the location. Now, that's not saying that I'm Mr. Expert and nobody buys outside of anywhere. I'm saying because they do. There's, there's, some area, there's one area in particular that I'm going to show you that I don't particularly like. I'm going to give my reasons why. But lots of people buy there, and that's fine. But I need to be confident in what, what I'm showing you. So what I want to try and do is break this region down a little bit for you. Hopefully, all this is going to work. You should see a map in front of you. It's not the best map in the world, but it's the one I've got. So uh, let me, hopefully, in a second, you're going to see an arrow. So you should see, hopefully, you've got that on your screen. So let's quickly look at this. Rome is basically in this direction. We have... Heading south, obviously, is, is where I am. 
Now, if you look at this area, it actually splits itself up pretty much on its own. So let, let me explain what I mean by that. We've got Pescara on the coast, Chieta here right next to it. And this is the motorway then that takes you straight to the Rome. I'm sure any of you that's been looking at Abruzzo will pretty much know this layout. I want to dissect this area by moving on to the next map. And this is how I would split it up. And the roads actually help me with this. So we've got five areas. To me, you need to see somewhere within each one of those five areas. If you've got the time, I'm going to keep this simple. If you haven't got the time, then I would choose this area. And you're probably going to say, yeah, Dave, because all your listings are on that. Yes, they are. That's true. I, all our listings are all around this area. But I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you why. Bear with me. If you haven't got the time, this area, this area, and this area. Notice when I say this area, I've got very little in here. So I'm not just pushing the stuff that, uh, that I've got. And Chitta Sant'Angelo, for all of you that want to know, is roughly somewhere around about what's there. Okay. So why do I say this? There is a huge difference between this area here at the bottom and this one, the neighboring area. People may say, I've been there. There isn't a huge difference. There is a huge difference. I've been here 15 years, and I know what the differences are. I'm not saying this place is bad and this one's good just because I live here. I live here in this uh, in this tiny little village here okay but i do know really well what these areas are like now the reason why if i didn't have much time i would leave this area and leave this area i'm going to give you now this part of abruzzo is the cheapest let's talk facts this is the cheapest part of abruzzo this is where all the and there's nothing wrong with that if you're on a if you're on a low budget and you, you, you may be looking for something detached, you want land, you maybe want garages, you might only have sort of 40, 50, 60 K. So you may, if, if you're gonna find it anywhere, this is where you'll find it. Now, the reason for that, I'm gonna give you my opinion. As I said, I may get slated a little bit for this, but, but I'm, I'm gonna give it anyway. First of all, Vasto is fantastic, just to let you know. One of my favorite beach resorts. I'm gonna show you a picture of it soon as well. Great place. So. Once you go inland from Vasto, this map is not brilliant, so you may not see properly. But if you can see, you have a main road here at the bottom. This purple line is actually a main road. This is called the Val di San Road that services sort of the, the, the north part of this section of Abruzzo and also where I am in this area. Now, if you look in between, there's quite a lot of white compared to everywhere else. If you look along there, I would say that there's more sort of roads in this area. This is because there's not a lot of main roads, so to speak. Now, you may say, well, I don't care about that. I don't want a main road. But you do need to get around reasonably quick. So the reason why this area is, I would say, potentially the cheapest part of a, of a In fact, no, I'm going to say it is uh, the cheapest part of a Bruto. is because it is a little bit more. Some of the towns are a little bit more isolated. And some of the towns are a little bit um, lacking in, in services and things like that. Now... I know there's going to be some people that that, that sort of are from down there that possibly listen to it and they're going to say rubbish. It's, it's not like that. It's not. You can only see for yourself. So go go and have a look. Go and have a look and see what you think about that area. I'm giving you my opinion on that area because, as I say, if you look at the populations in some of the towns, they are quite low, which is fine. I live in a place that that only has has just a little bit less than a thousand people in it. I don't claim to live in a big city or anything else. Uh, we, we live in a small village, but I'm then on my doorstep, I have bigger places. I have Casually, I have Guardia Grell, they're all within 15 minutes. I have Faro San Martino, that's 10 minutes. I then have Lanciano, which is a, a much bigger town of, of, of 30 odd thousand, whatever it is, that's half an hour from where I am. I'm half an hour from the beach and I'm 45 minutes from ski resorts. Now, some people may not want to, or people may not be interested in ski uh, and that kind of thing. But what we have is, is, is an area that's not. I live in a small village, but it's well connected to others. And going back to what I was saying earlier, when people say, well, why is there nobody in the village? If I go to Palombar and did a village of it, a, a video of it now, there'd be nobody, not now, or through the day, there'd be very few people. And people say, well, it's, it's a dying town, it's this, it's that. No, it's not. Kids are at school, people are at work, old folks are in, it's winter time. Okay? I'm not saying that it's just thousands of people walking down the street uh, in, in the height of, of the height of the, the holiday season. I'm not going to say that. 
There isn't, but there is much more of a buzz about it. But what I love about it is if I want that next bit of buzz, I want that bust in market, I go to Casali or I go to Guadia Grail. It's a great town. What I don't do is have a small village, then the next one is a small village and there's not much of it. And next, Now, some people love that. If that's what you like and you're on a budget, then head to the south because that, that is what it's like. Not in every town, but in the vast majority. The populations are much lower, but it's more the thing of you don't always see where the development can come from just yet, which is a shame, but that's the reality. Whereas in these areas, in my opinion, again, because you've got the bigger towns around you, you've got easy access to ski, so obviously you're going to have the, 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 the tourism that that brings along. The roads, there's a, a lot more roads. Yes, there may be potholes in some of them. And I mean, from where I live, my first five minutes, five, ten minutes of a journey is a little bit bad, hard going. But that's, that's just the way it is. Then I'm on main roads and then I'm off. I can be wherever I want to be. It's just different because you do have that. You can just move around the area much quicker. So I want to bring that map on again, if I can work out how to do that. Uh, here we go. Okay, so right, where's my hour gone? Let me just see. So that, that's this area. This area where I am, I think is well connected. You, you can easily get to the to the coast from, from here. So I'm I'm here in Palombaro. Guardia Grail's here, Casley around here. So all of this is the Mayela mountain range. If you love the high mountains, if you love the backdrop of the high mountains, unfortunately, you don't get that. You do still get mountains, but not the main mountain range is here, the Mayela. And then here, which is the Grand Sasso. So consider that. If you love the mountains, but easy access to the coast, this is this part of, of the mountain is the closest to the coast. So this, you can literally do skiing in the morning, beach in the afternoon. Then north of, this is obviously the main motorway, north of this, uh, this part, some people love this area. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to pull this down. You've got Penny. A lot of people love Penny. You've got the famous... Sorry for that noise. That was my, uh, my, my drink of water. You've got the famous Chitta Sant'Angelo. Uh, then you've got the Grand Sasso range, which is really nice. Then you move north again, and you're on sort of the borders of La Marque. I've never really got this place. I've been there only a few times, so I can't say I've, I've, I've been down here a lot, and obviously here I live, um, and here a fair amount. This area for me, it's sort of in between. What do I mean by in between? It's not quite La and it's not quite Abruzzo. It's sort of, for me, even though Teramo is beautiful, if I had to miss two out, then these would be the two and I would concentrate more here. Again, my opinion. Then you've got this side of the mountain, the Aquila region. Aquila is stunning, absolutely stunning. It's been re we all know that there was a, an earthquake there in 2009, unfortunately. They've completely rebuilt the place, and it is absolutely stunning. But I love this part, Sulmona. Around Sulmona is stunning. If you're looking for a bigger town that has got the um, the historical areas, so if you, you, I were talking about sort of Pescara before and saying that Pescara is a great place, but there's no historical part to it. Chieti, there is. It's five minutes away. If you want historical, you don't go to Pescara. If you want real historical, then you go and head towards Sulmona. Because Vasto, Guardia Grel, Sulmona, these are important places, Aquila, within the uh, Abruzzo region. Sulmona, there's some incredible places around Sulmona. So I want to show you now a few photographs to back up, back up what I'm saying. So going back again to this map, I just want to just quickly say to you that the main thing to consider here, if you like the beach, something that you must know, that from roughly here, I keep forgetting my arrows here now, hopefully you can see this. So from this area here, Ortona South, the coastline is completely different to Ortona and North. So that brings me on to this next one. North of Pescara, or Pesca or Ortona Northwards, so including Franca Villa, Pescara, Monte Silvano, heading up to Pineto, all of these places. This is Pineto, which is a beautiful beach. This is typical of the beach areas uh, in, in the north part, if you like. So if you like this kind of thing, that's where you need to head. When you start heading south, this is the further south. This is Vasco. So the, the coastline is completely different. And this, this is a fact. We're talking facts here. The coastline, in my opinion, from Ortona southwards, 
is more picturesque. Some people will love the busyness of Pescara and everything else, and this place gets packed, vasto. But there's lots of coves. You do get pebble beaches here as well, and you also get um, uh, sandy beaches. Eric is saying Salmona is where we're thinking, centrally located. It's a brilliant place, Eric. Anyway, so this is the furthest south. Now, I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can see my arrow. There's sort of a, a little bit of a line here at the bottom, a mountain range. That's actually the Gargano in Puglia. So here you have Molise, and right at the end of this, uh, uh, what's the word? I'm losing my English words. Peninsula, do we say? I can't remember now. Um, is Termoli. Termoli is another great place. That's in Molise. Then you have Puglia there, and then Abruzzo ends round about here. But this is typical of the coastline in the south. Then we also have, uh, on the south part, the Trabocchi, the famous Trabocchi, which are ancient fishing fishing vessels that are, a lot of them are turned into restaurants. And they're, they're absolutely superb. Great experience. But the great thing with the Trabocchi coastline, uh, it, it runs the full length of Abruzzo, but where it gets at its best is the new cycle path that they've done down there. Uh, it's a, a cycling walking path that runs along what used to be the old uh, the railway. And it's absolutely stunning. It really is uh, so, so nice down there. Uh, Shannon is saying, Steve, I'm in, uh, I'm in Leto Manapello right now, and I absolutely agree. So I'm in Leto Manapello. I'm going to show some of the, uh, uh, the details on that. I'm going to show you a photograph of that as well in a second. Can you help in other areas, or should I find a local agent? Send me an email, uh, Gonzalo, and I will let, uh, let you know. Okay, so we've done the coastline. The coastline, that is, a fact is that the coastline is different. So from Ortona South is looks a little bit more broken up. There's some beautiful coves. Um, there's sandy beaches, there's pebble beaches, there's a mix of everything. There's the famous Trabocchi. But from Ortona Northwards, it's more, what can you say, Rimini style. Pinetto is beautiful. Uh, Rosetto is, I think it's Rosetto. They're, they're beautiful areas, some lovely beaches up there. It's a, a completely different to the south. Fact, okay, so we're straight with that. Now, moving back on to, I am going to be going backwards and forwards a little bit uh, on this. So let me do the map again. So I've told you that I live in this area. Now, the vast majority of properties that are listed on our uh, on our website start from around about this area on the Maella, go all around the Maella mountain range, round to this side, and do the Sulmona and this range. I also have some properties sort of in, in this area. I don't tend to go as far north as Pennick yet. Um, and the reason is, and I, I will back up every time, I do really like these areas. So I just want to give you a little taste of what some of these areas are like and why you shouldn't, when you see mountains, you shouldn't think, oh, I don't want to be right up in the mountains because it's only when people come here and they realize how, how the terrain works. So... Around Palombaro, where I showed you that I live, this is Palombaro. This is this is where I live. I'm not here just to just to promote Palombaro. What I loved about this area, so this is the town here, is you have the backdrop of the huge part of the Maella National Park, which is stunning. But then from the village looking outwards, you're looking towards the coast. So this looks like it's well up in the mountains, but it isn't. That's not that's not how the lay of the land works here. So some people would look at this and say, no, no, I don't, that, that's too far. I'm too far from the beach. It takes me half an hour to get to the beach. It's nothing. I see when you stand in that village and look at the opposite direction, you look at something completely different. Now, I live at the foot of the mountain. My house is um, basically in this section here, at the foot of the mountain. So some people will say it's going to be freezing. You know, all these people that wind me up on, 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 on uh, YouTube and things like that that say it must be freezing, loads of snow, it's cut off, blah, blah, blah. What a load of rubbish. I can get out of my house with no, I wish it snowed more. We have the snow, you can see the tree line there where it stops. That's where the snow is most of the time. I'm not saying everybody should flock to the mountains and flock to, that's not why I'm saying this. I'm just trying to give people, when people see things like this and they write, they write rubbish because if we're blocked in with snow, it may be for a few days, a handful of days. It's not how it works because we're on the seaside of the mountains. But even on the other side of the mountain, Sulmona Way, yes, it can be slightly cooler, but it's also warmer in summertime. But it, you're not under sort of six foot of snow unless you go right up into the mountains. So this is where I live. It's not cut off. We're very close to lots of things. And there's also a couple of great restaurants, uh, great restaurants around the town. Yes, you have to drive. That's my choice. 
So what I will say, if you're looking in the areas, this particular part, so around sort of Palombar or maybe Casali, I do want to say, because it is important to say, that these areas, if you need good public transport, maybe it's not quite the area for you around sort of where I am. Palombar or Faris San Martin or places like that, because you do tend to drive a lot more. And the public transport doesn't pass as much as, as what some people would like. I'm going to say where I think you should base yourselves if you do need public transport, because that's another important thing. Okay, so next time, that's one of the ski resorts as well. Here you can see some, I don't know if you can see the antennas. This is the kind of scenery that you have, but you're not up in the mountains. It's 300 odd meters, which in the grand scale of it, things is, is, is nothing much at all. But if, again, if you turn the other way around, you can see down towards the coast. This is Faris San Martino. This is actually quite low, believe it or not, here, but you're right up isolated in the mountains, under snow and all the way. It's not like that. It really isn't. You've got to come and, and see. Do you want this kind of a, a backdrop? Do you want that sort of that real striking uh, mountain view or would you prefer more gentle? You're only going to know that if you go and visit. Don't look at this and say, that's right up in the mountains. Because, again, you're 35, 40 minutes, you're sat by the beach. It's just, you need to experience the lay, layout. Cool Pot is saying, where would be a good place that doesn't get too hot? I prefer cooler to warmer. Abruzzo gets hot. In summertime, it gets hot. You can't get away from that. Unless you live at 1,000 metres, then, the, then, the, then it may start to cool down. You know, you may want to move a little bit further north, possibly. Uh, look, obviously, I want you to stay in Abruzzo. But if, if you do suffer with heat, then you know, possibly look at something around about 1,000 metres. Um, and, and that's where evenings are much cooler. Um, here's another one. Chivitella, Mesa Raimondo. If you remember last week's uh, streaming session with Lexi and Craig, they live just to the left of this picture. Uh, but again, you look at, I don't know if you can remember the view from Craig's uh, place show beautiful countryside that's because if you just turn this picture around then you will see the rolling countryside and all the rest of it so that's that side of the mountain going back to this map moving around this side of the mountain so manopello leto manopello which the person who's just been on there uh, said that they're staying at the moment and rocamorici places like that so this north side of the maella Again, similar, similar with the, the kind of uh, backdrops that, 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 uh, that they have. Sorry, my arrow wasn't on there, was it? Manopello. Sorry, I'm talking about this area now. Manopello, Leto Manopello, Rocca Morice. So you've got much easier access to the motorways. You've got much easier access to uh, things like public transport and that kind of thing. So let me show you a little bit of what that place looks like. Sorry to have to skip through these all the time. This is the... Uh, Centro Storico of uh, uh, Manopello. Barbara saying, hi, neighbor. <laughs> I totally agree. I love my house in Palombar. Easy to get to a lot of places. I'm glad I, bad, I'm glad I bought where I'm at. I'm glad you did as well, Barbara. <laughs> Good to hear from your neighbor. Um, so, yeah, that's Manopello. Then we have, this is Leto Manopello, where the person was that, that's, uh, that, that's just been on. Now, this is the town. So this is Leto Manopella, and then you're looking at the mountains here. I mean, th this is a beautiful part of the Maella. I'm thinking, again, I don't want to be up in the mountains. The next picture is when you stood here, looking out of Leto Manopella, and this is what it's like. If you look a little bit further to the right, you're looking more towards the coast. So, it is, again, you're not up in the mountains. Here, you drop down the hill, and you're literally five minutes, you're on the motorway that takes you to Rome. And there's more public, there's lots of public transport and that kind of thing. And then when we talk about towns that, why does everywhere look so desolate? Here's a good reason. Look at this place. Now, this is Rocca Morice. I love Rocca Morice. Great place. Now, look at this. People would say, well, there's no wonder how surprises. Look at this. There's not a soul to be here. First of all, do we actually believe that all these bars, Rocca Morice is, is a small town that has a number of bars, Pizzeria, restaurant, it has so much in, in, in um, uh, so I'm just being asked, what is the historical city or town near the seaside? I would say Vasto. Vasto is a, is, is a great place. Um, Rocca Morice is a buzzing little place. So let's imagine when I took this photograph, you know, people would just say, buzzing, is this your idea of buzzing? 
what you need to understand when people take videos and photographs, this particular day, if I remember rightly, it was a morning, it was absolutely boiling, absolutely boiling. And this person I was telling you about on YouTube earlier that was talking about this thing that I'm talking about now, uh, talking about why is nobody there, they actually said Italians are, have a, uh, what, what's the word, um, they, they work with nature, meaning that when it's hot, they get up at five in the morning, do their work, and then stay inside at nine. They're, I've, I've forgotten the phrase now, and I actually wrote it down, not creatures of nature, whatever it is. So if it's boiling hot, they're not going to be sat on the terraces. That's the last thing they're going to do. When people say, why don't people open the windows? Why are all the windows closed? Because in the wintertime, it keeps the heat in. And in the summertime, it keeps the hot sun out. People find it amazing. You know when us Brits are in town, because it's, it's usually a little bit cool, in, because we just throw our windows open. We throw, we throw our, our windows open and let the heat in. The Italians walk past and laugh at us because we don't sleep that night because it's too hot. And then everybody's saying, can I buy air conditioning? You don't need air conditioning. Do what the Italians do. Close your windows. Close your shutters. Block the sun. When the sun's on this side of your house, close the shutters. Open the back side of the house. This, my wife's grandma showed us the art of what to do with windows when it's boiling hot. She lived while she was 90 odd years old. These people know what they're talking about. It's not because places are dead. It's because they think, why do I want to walk around in 40 degrees? When people say, this terrace is not really private because, look, there's another terrace over the road. You probably won't see anybody ever out on that terrace. It's probably used to dry clothes occasionally because Italians won't sit out. We, we will sit outside and bake because we're outside. I don't care. I'm outside. I need the sun. You know, it's 40 degrees. I'm dying here. It's really uncomfortable. Italians won't do that. They laugh at us. <laughs> they stay in because it's cooler. You can sit and have dinner in peace. And you, you, you're not bugged by the, the immense heat. I'm not saying that it's horrible being in the mess. No, it's great. But again, Italians do go at certain times of day. If you go to a normal working town, like some of the small villages, like my village, Palombar, and people say, well, there's not many people around. As I said to you before, people are working. Kids are at school. Maybe if it's summertime, they're down by the beach. There's certain times of the day when places get busy. If you go in a bar between 6 and 8 in the morning, it's buzzing. People have the coffees before they go to work. Most of us, they're on holiday maybe this time of year. We don't get out of bed until maybe nine, half nine, go for a stroll and think, where's everybody gone? That's because it's already life's already been and gone. If you imagine some of your places where you live, maybe some of you live in cities, so that's different. If you move to a village, it, life is different. You can't expect it to be bustling with people. That's not what it's like. You know, it, but it doesn't mean to say there's nobody there. All these bars and things like that, that, that was my point with this place. How can it be that all these bars are open and, and, and there's, there's, these places don't survive on nothing? You can't have businesses and not earn anything. So people must go. It's the wrong time of day. It's a simple thing like that. People have got to, what was that word or phrase, manage their expectations. Don't go in February to every single town and village and say, oh, this looks like it's dying off. There's nobody here. All these towns and villages have great services. And you can actually have a, a great social life once you get into the real beat of Italy, which is not sat in a, in a piazza with a million people, eating at a restaurant. But let's be honest, some of the restaurants in some of these tourist places are terrible. You know, we had nice food while we're down in, 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 in Puglia. The food is fantastic. But there's nothing better than finding a place off the beaten track. When people say, you know, when you watch these holiday programs where we're going off the beaten track and they go to Venice, you think, well, what's off the beaten track about that? Why aren't you going to real places? Why, aren't you going to, why don't you go to the places where the heart is really beating in Italy? Not all that. We don't want tourist things. We think we do, but you don't. Because when you experience real Italy, you won't look back. Uh, Steve is saying that he's looking for tranquility. There is that. And that, the great thing about, for instance, where we live, You've got as much tranquility as you want. But if you want life, you just move a little bit. Move to the next place. That's when you've got to then think about whether or not you need public transport and all the rest of it. That's a side issue. All I'm trying to say to you is don't rule anything out. Because for me, as long as a place, my, my opinion, a peaceful place, I love being in a peaceful place. But I also love having that atmosphere, you know, walking around the cafe bars and things like that. But that happens here between 7 
and nine. And then at nine o'clock, the streets are quiet. And that happens in most places in Italy because people eat, people eat at nine o'clock. It's ridiculous, I know, but that's what happens. When the first time we got invited to somebody's house and we said, what time do we come for dinner? And they said, nine o'clock. We sort of all looked at them as if there was something something wrong. You know, <laughs> I was thinking, do you not, do you not have a TV? Uh, because usually that's what we do. We've already finished by then. And, you know, you sit watching a film. People do things in a different way. So when you go to a place and you think, oh, this is nice. This is us, hustle and bustle. And we're sat around this little. If you stop and listen and listen to who's there, it's just a bunch of tourists. And then you actually look at menu and you think, actually, this pizza in the, in Abruzzo cost me six, seven euros. It's costing me 12 here. And it's not particularly good. And I'm sat around another couple from the UK, which is fine. I'm not pulling anywhere down from the UK. I'm a Brit myself. I'm sat, I'm not getting the real Italy. You only get the real Italy by going to real Italy and really going. I'm not going to say going off the beaten track because that to me is almost like no roads and all the rest of it, because Abruzzo is not like that at all. It's real because it, it's, it's real life. And if you want a social life, rather than just sitting and looking at other people and sitting and, and looking at whoever passed by, there's nothing better than getting to know an Italian family. Because the best thing about living in Italy is the people, the people that you'll meet, the experiences that you have with those people. If you remember the streaming session that we did with uh, Mark and Tracy a few weeks ago. They bought a place in a, a town called Taranta Pelina. I think there's a population of 300 there, something like that. And they absolutely love it, absolutely love it. And they, the, the, the village has taken them in as family. But if they want a little bit more action, they're not far from, from places. Within every five or 10 minutes, there's something else. It's only until you experience that. That you can, that you'll understand. You'll understand Abruzzo. You'll understand the attraction of it. And, and, and really, and, and Grace is saying, "Love Italy." Yeah, and I love Italy. I love the whole of Italy. But here is different. So let me show you another few pictures. So Rocca, that's Rocca Marici. Rocca Marici is also famous for. This is another view of Rocca Marici. You see again how you've got the the background of the uh, of the Maya Mountains. And Rocca Mariccia is here. But again, you come in the opposite direction. You're down on the motorway to Rome in 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes, something like that. It's so easy to get around. Don't look at this place and say, no, too isolated, not interested. Go and have a look. Don't, don't book millions of house viewings. Book a limited amount and then go and have a look at these places. This is in Rocca Mariccia. These, these, you've got to see these places. This is where real experiences come out. This happens to be in Rocca Marici, but there's a number of sites like this throughout Abruzzo. These, are, these have got a thousand years of story. These are hermit's chapels that are built into the mountainside. I know when you say hermit, you imagine sort of small people like Yoda from Star Wars, where it's nothing to do with that. I was quite excited thinking it was, but it's not. You know, just in case you thought it was. These are where the real experiences happen. Because you go here and think, you know what, I guarantee now you go to these places and you'll say, why is this place not teeming full of tourists? And it should be, and it is at certain times of year, but oh my God, it's so good when everybody's gone and you've got these places to yourself because you'll have, you'll have an experience like you've never had before. Uh, Brett saying, visiting May this spring, do you recommend renting a car to get a better feel for the area or taking a bus or train suffice? Rent a car. Not because the bus services are terrible, because I'm going to show you my opinions on on where to look if you if you sort of need better transport. But you've got to have a car for the first time. Have a really good look around. Well worth it. Um, okay, this now going round to the other side of the mountain, which is Sulmona. If you're looking for, let me just go back to the map first. If you are looking for real historical places, this area has got to be seen, the Peligna Valley. Sulmona, um, Pacentro, all of these towns, Vittorito, Raiano, you probably, if you watch the channel, you've seen properties for sale there. They are great places. They are fantastic places. And I love where I live. Here is completely different in a, in a great way. I, I would potentially, it would definitely be a tough decision for me if, if I had my time again as to where I live. I, I love it here, but I also love it there. You have to see this part. It has to be part of your road trip. 
some people will say, yeah, but you're on the other side of the mountains, you're further from the sea. It's so easy to get to be who's linked to by a motorway. You know, if you're living in the south, you, so you look like you're closer to the coast, but if the roads are not great, you need to look at things like that. Here you can jump on a train, you can jump on a boat, and you can be uh, on the coast in no time. If you're looking for great public transport and easy access to Rome as well as Abruzzo, this is the area. Have a look around someone. It has to be on your list. Even if you can't do the other areas that I mentioned when I, when I gave the five regions, if you've got time, if you're weak, go around these areas where I am, go out to the north side of the Maiella, then go around Penne and these areas, and then you must, must include Sulmona. If you've only got time to do two, then follow in my footsteps and do hug the mountain, hug the Maiella mountain range and go around sort of this sort of area. Um, I know I'm going to push that because obviously that's where a lot of our uh, listings are, but you'll see why when you come. So this area, Sulmona, this is where you see the real historical towns let me just get to them so this is the center of Sulmona again you see that these mountains are in the background but what a gorgeous backdrop absolutely great place then you have this is from a, a, a terrace of a uh, an apartment that uh, that we that we sold recently absolutely superb or oh, help people buy should I say then we've got Pacentro Pacentro is gorgeous I actually used to have a, a, a banner at the back of my webinars with a picture of Pacentro, which was this one. So here you have Sulmona here in the background. Then you have looking further, in, I'm not even sure if that's Vittorito or if that's, but all, all of these areas in the, no, I think Vittorito is a bit further around this way, but you have Vittorito, Popoli, you have Raiano, you have Corfino, you have Sulmona, you have Pacentro, you have Petorano Sulgizio, you have um uh intro d'acqua and i'm just throwing names at, but it's so easy to to go and see that you could see all this place in a day pack yourself up in sulmona and and think to yourself i'm going to have a, a another another look uh jamie's saying you've already captured the hearts of those who want to come to bruce and i'm sure you'll continue to do so we're excited to see all the places now you should be you should definitely be excited i love it i mean i've been coming here for a year for nearly 20 no yeah 20 years now absolutely love the place and still exploring these places here is the uh brett said uh if you had to do just put that one up again tony uh if you had to do it over what what would be a quick two three day of a brutal for a first time a great question Brett. and i'm gonna answer that in a second let me just finish this off so this is chieti if you're looking for old old historical unfortunately pescara has not got it but it's worth a worth a look at you have to go to pescara chieti has that historical thing and, and it's a great feel it's not a huge place you can easily walk you can do Kiate and Pescara together with no problem at all here's another one uh, the last one uh, of Kiate okay so let's start to wind this up a little bit let me get myself back on the screen brilliant question uh by I think it was it Brett that asked that question if it wasn't I'll do it but yeah Brett it was so as a first time a quick two to three day tour of a brutal what would I do first of all if you're viewing properties, then be honest with the people that you're working with, not just for their sake, because people will put a lot of time, diesel money and everything else showing you properties. But you need to be honest to say to people, look, I don't really know the area and I do need to check it out first. Don't just think, I love that place. That looks great. That photograph looks great. I'm going to build, I'm going to have, I'm going to see 10 houses around there. Because if you get there and you don't like it, you've just wasted all your, all your time, all your trip. So don't do that. Have a look at each little places and do legwork at work on your own as well. If you're coming for five days, don't book five days of property viewings. Book two days of property viewings. A couple of mornings, three mornings. Leave the afternoons free because it's so important. Because you will not... I know if you're coming from the States or somewhere else, it's a long way to come and not see as many properties. I get that. But you've got to make your time. Uh, work for yourself right let me go back to brett's uh question so i need my map again for this uh and i must get a, a better map uh map, map god i can't get my words out all right here we go let me find this i'm still not used to this new streaming software here we go here's the map so brett's question put it up again tony i forgot it again <laughs> if you had to do it over what would be a quick two to three day tour of brutal for a first timer here we go here's my two to three day Day one, I would, if you're basing yourself somewhere here in the middle, 
day one, I'm going to say, obviously you can visit the coast. You're going to have to give a morning for the coast. Do the south part of the coast. Yeah, drive along, not the motorway, drive along the, the one that runs along the side of the motorway and finish in Vasto. If you, if you only had a morning to do look at the Traboki. You've got to see the Traboki. You've got to see the best part of the cycle path and all of that. So if you had a choice, north or south, and I'm not pulling these down because Pineto, I really like Monte Silvano. I'm really sorry, Monte Silvano. I'm going to say I'm not as keen. Um, Pineto, I think, is really nice. Rosetta is lovely. Julia Nova, all these. But if you had a choice, head south because it's, it's very varied. Here, just north of Vasto, there's also a, a nature reserve that's beautiful. So I would say do that as part of the day. Then, I'm not being cruel to other areas. This is what I would say. I would say, Chieti, head inland to Guardia Grail. Then I would say, Casoli. And then I would say, link that up then with your, your, your little tour of the, of, the, uh, of the coast. Head down here, down the coastline, and head south to Vasto. Then jump on the motorway and go back to Pescara. That'd be day one. So Chieti, Guardia Grail. If you if you if you don't mind a few curves in the road, come past where I live. Let me know you come in and you can bring me a bottle of wine. I mean, I'll I'll make you a cup of tea. Uh, Palombaro, Casoli, off to the coast, down to Vasto, and back again. Day one. That'd be a great day. Day two has to be, in my opinion. Uh, Rocco Morice, Caramanico Terme, all of this area. This will be a great day. This, right, right, this, this is a great day for you. Start off, you've got to see Rocco Morice, you've got to see those, those chapels in the mountains. Then Caramanico, then take the road that runs at the back of the mountain range from Sulmona. It's called the Paso San Leonardo, that takes you into the mountain. Come out at Pacentro, which is the town that I had the banners at the back of my, uh, I'll show you again, the Pacentro. You come down to Pacentro, it, down to Sulmona, then jump on the motorway and back to Pescara. That has to be a, a, a great one because then you get to see some of the magical things. Paso San Leonardo, I'm going through Caramanico Terme, Paso San Leonardo, I'm dropping to Pacentro, Pacentro Bean, I need to show you Pacentro again. Uh, this place. Uh, you have to do that. So that will be day two. Then I'm going to say day three. <laughs> Tough one now because I'd be tempted while I'm in the Salmon area. You, you see, you have places like the Lake of Scanno that's hidden in the mountains here. That's incredible. If you've got the time, if you do this first bit a little bit quicker, Salmon and Scanno, brilliant. Then that, that that's a heavy going two day, but brilliant. Then I, I've got to be fair to the, to this part. I would then say Penne, Atri. I've, you know, I've never been to Atri, and, and I should do. The only thing for me with Atri that I've been told by a number of planets as well is Atri is great, but there's not much around it in terms of anything else. So I would then say try this area, heading towards Penne, and, and take a look closer to the Grand Sasso, just so you can see the Grand Sasso mountain range that is stunning. My opinion is still... I love. I just love this part, and even doing the full circle of the, of the, of the Maella is 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 amazing. But if I have to spread your wings out a little bit further, then then do the pendant and do do around these areas. There you go. That is my three day special in Abruzzo. Okay, guys, I've gone over time a little bit. I do apologize. Five minutes over time, but I'm going to go back to it again. I probably didn't. I tend to start these conversations off and then I think, you know, I start talking about something and then I completely forgot by the end. But going back to what I was saying before about these people that, that, that write things and all that kind of thing, I do, I, I'm passionate about it because I know the reality of it. And, and, and I, I can't, obviously I have a job to do to help people buy properties and all the rest of it. There's always that as part of my of, of, of part of my thing but my passion for here goes well beyond that it really does so even if you just come in for a holiday or something like that you have to you, you have to come because there, there's just no there is no other area like it i'm going to say that and I, we, i've been all over it i've been coming my wife's italian we've been together for 20 better get this right 26 years and i've been coming to italy for 26 years and we've been we've been to so many different places 
um brett saying i've just done exactly that three days i think days advice is good but i would add that two to three days including viewings won't be enough to do justice to the region bang on right steve um but yeah sorry where was i so for 26 years i've been i've been doing this and i've been i've been going to all over different parts of italy and i love italy i love it from top to toe absolutely love it as i've said before i go to sicily a lot i've been four or five times love sicily love puglia it's easy to get to from our i go down there I have a, a, a weekend there, I do everything else, but there's just something different about this place. So everything that you see on the internet, don't prejudge it. What was that thing the person said? Change your whatever it was. I'm, I, I should listen to my own. Should, I should make my own little things up, shouldn't I? Just come, experience it. Don't lock yourself into a part of it just because you think you've read enough on the internet. Because there's not enough on the internet about Abruzzo. There's very little on the internet about Abruzzo. It's actually quite annoying. But in the same breath, it's actually quite satisfying because you just think, you know what? As I said to you earlier, close the doors. Leave us alone. <laughs> Things are great here. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you uh, enjoyed that one. Sorry that uh, I've gone a little bit over time. Make sure you join us uh, next Thursday when we do the deposit contract. So if you decide that you are going to buy property here, hopefully through us you can understand what all these contracts mean and that kind of thing hope my passion for our has come across hope to see you out here and if you do uh intend on coming out as i said before plan it properly speak honestly with people that uh that, that you, you know if you just come in to look at the area don't waste people's time by showing your properties because it's not just their time you're wasting it's yours as well because you're not going to an estate agent or whoever's going to look at it is not just going to uh you know show you a brood size if it's they're a tourist guy they're going to show you property so you're going to go from one property to another to another and you're going to be looking over the thing and thinking i wonder what that town is there i wonder what that place is there and they're going to say no we need to get to the next one we've got an appointment that's what we did when we came here it was such a mistake a huge mistake i was driving around sending myself absolutely crazy i got an appointment at 10 past two there then five past three there i'd never even been before i didn't know where i was going the map the everything was just going wrong don't put yourself through that stress. You need to have a look around the area. Be honest with people. Tell them what, what you're doing. Because if people are worth anything, they will help you. Because I know if you come to see me now, but you don't intend on buying for another year, I would rather you tell me. Tell me that. So we can change things. Not because I don't want to see you. But I could say, look, why come with me now? I understand you may want to see a couple of properties. We can go and see a couple of properties. But you need to spend your time looking at this area properly and understanding this area and then when these cretins write on my youtube channel you can get on there and defend okay that's the mission guys thank you so much i'll see you next week